All right, fam, what is happening? In today's video, we are gonna be fitting the carbon fiber steering wheel complete with LED shift lights in the 2020 MK5 Supra, okay? So there's a lot to get done in today's video. There's a lot to do to make sure you guys know exactly what to do so you don't mess anything up inside of your car, All right? So let's get started, and we're gonna go step by step. All right, guys, the first thing you need to do is disconnect the battery. Okay, so you can see here, I've just disconnected the negative terminal there. I've covered it up with a cloth, all right, just so it doesn't touch anything. Yes, I have left the positive terminal connected, but the way an electronic system works is if this negative side is connected here, it creates the circuit because this is the negative or the earth inside of the battery. Okay, if nothing touches this right here, there's no circuit, which means there's no electricity flowing around um, the car which is perfect okay so but remember guys what you need to do is there is no boot catch on the outside of the mk5 supra okay so if you're going to close the boot make sure you cover it with something so it doesn't catch otherwise you're going to be climbing through there to try and release the boot all right what we need to do next is here, you can see I've already done one side. I'm gonna show you when we jump in. If we need to stick a screwdriver in this side here, we're gonna puncture a hole in the side of the steering wheel just so we can release the airbag, All right? I'm gonna set the camera up on the um, window on the other side of the car, just so you guys can see exactly how I do that for the other side. Well, that took time, didn't it? Okay, so now we've got that out. All right, so that was fiddly, right, to say the least. Okay, but now that it's come off, you don't want to pull this out too far because you see it is all connected. And that black clip up there to the left, I'll put an arrow on the video screen for you guys. Um, right up there is the one we're going to disconnect and then this white one up the top there as well. So we'll do that, it's gonna be easier for me to do that, and then I'll show you on the clips how they actually disconnect. Hey okay guys, so the one that we were gonna disconnect was this one up here, and then this white one that was sat up the top there, okay. So this is the black one here. You can see that, hold on, let me get my hand out of the way for you. You can see that down here, it has a like a raised edge. All that you need to do is get your flat blade screwdriver in there just to push down on the clip and it should slide straight off. And then this white one here in here, you can see that little hole right there in the clip. All you're gonna do is again, get the edge of your screwdriver, push it down in there, and then that clip pulls apart too. Okay, these wires guys are super, super small. So the last thing you wanna do is just pull on them for the sake of it, okay? Okay, so now that we actually have the whole airbag assembly and horn out here. 
what we can go ahead and do now is remove this 16 mil bolt okay so this is torqued in obviously there's a torque setting on it um but it's also going to have loctite on it as well okay so it's going to be super 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 tight which means that you may have to turn the steering wheel all the way to one side to crack it off now i've already cracked it off so i'm going to go ahead and finish undoing that and then i'm going to show you how we disconnect these last two connectors and give you a tip before you take the wheel off right. so as you can see like i said i knew there'd be a bit of loctite on that there and there it is so we're going to make sure that when we put it back in we just use loctite again before we put it back in okay and there it is all the loctite's broken down you can see there's just a bit of residue from that loctite so what we're going to do is going to grab the screwdriver that i seem to be sat on right now all right, oh, there it is. We're gonna apply a little bit of pressure up the top here, okay, to remove this plug. And a little bit of pressure on this side here on the clip to remove this one, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so those are out, okay? And you can see it's really easy to distinguish where everything goes which is perfect okay all these wires are for the things like the paddle shifters um the steering wheel vibration system that's held down here underneath this bit here and all of this everything here I'll zoom out a bit for you as far as i can all of this is going to be transferred over into the new wheel but remember now that the wheel's ready to take off you want to make sure that the wheel is straight before you take it off, so when you put the other one back on, it's straight. Once you've taken this wheel off, don't mess around with anything that is underneath the wheel. Take it off, get out of the car, go to your workspace, change the wheels over. I'll show you how to do that. Come back in, fit it on. Don't mess around with anything that's underneath the steering wheel. Put it all back together, you're good to go. And just so you guys know what it looks like. Don't mess around with any of that. Leave it as it is don't, if you don't need to. In order to take the wheel off, once everything's undone, all you gotta do is give it a little bit of a shimmy and it'll slide straight off. So let's take this wheel and the airbag system inside onto the workspace and we'll help uh, and I'll show you guys how to change everything over. All right, so we're here on the workspace. Here's the carbon fiber wheel. Here's the airbag horn complete with the whole clock assembly thing. All right, now in order to start getting everything off, we're gonna start taking off the paddle shifters first, okay? So these Torx bits down here, all right? Leave those in first, and then we're gonna unplug these, okay? These blue ones unplug exactly the same as the white one there okay that we unplugged earlier so what we're going to do is depress down inside that hole and pull it out at the same time once we've done that we can undo the torx bits and remove the paddle shifters so i'll do that and i'll show you what that looks like all right so here are the paddle shifters we've removed those from the wheels guys what i always do when i'm removing stuff is if they have a screw that is specific for that so i don't lose it I just screw it back in lightly just so I never lose that, okay? Now, if you guys have bought the um, the Ironclad Motorsports extended carbon fiber paddle shifters, okay? Um, in fact, let me go and grab some and I'll show what they look like. Yeah, so if you guys have bought the carbon fiber paddle shifters, you're gonna need to transfer this over into here. Now, these are actually a customer's paddle shifters, okay? The guy wanted to have a leather because he's got the red leather interior, so he wanted red leather here, and he wanted the red symbol to match that. Now, so I'm not gonna fit, actually show you how to fit this in here, because it is a customer paddle that's already been paid for. Um, so I'm not gonna do that, I'm not gonna scratch it or anything, but I just wanted to show you. All you have to do is see you've got down here, right there, and then on the other side as well, Bigger on this side, bigger on the top side, smaller on the bottom side. You are gonna push that out so it comes out this side 
and that'll clip off. There'll be a spring underneath it, which will sit back in here, all right? And you'll just transfer everything over into your extended carbon fiber paddle shifter. All right, so if you once you've taken the paddle shifters off, if you turn the wheel over down in here and on this side as well, you can see is another Torx bit, all right? So we're gonna remove that, okay? Because this is what holds in part of the center piece of the trim here, okay? This whole piece along here is held in by screws behind it and then just clips in down there. So we need to remove those and then these literally just pop off, okay? I'm gonna pop this side off and then take everything out. All right, guys, so next step, here is all the wiring loom for the steering wheel. Okay, I hope you guys are still following me. It's super, super self-explanatory where everything goes, okay? This black clip here goes underneath the controls on this side, in there, right in there, okay? Because that sits on there. There is no clip on the other side with the cruise controls, okay? It literally pulls off. You do have to apply a little bit of force. It's not clipped in. It's just kind of like wedged in to all of these little <coughs> holes there. And then this bottom piece here also just pulls off, okay? And you can see the style of clip that it is that's holding it in. There is no real way to release that clip without pulling it out, okay? So you guys wanna be pretty careful when you pull it out because it all comes out from in these pieces, all right? Because we need to transfer all this over because this is the steering wheel vibration unit, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out, all right? And then I'm gonna show you, um, so I'm gonna tell you how all of that comes out, but we need to undo these here, okay? This is gonna slide out. This is gonna just lift out here, all right? like that, okay? And all of this gets transferred over into the new wheel and you can see that there is all the holes here and the lines and everything to put everything in. All right, so now once you've got all of the wiring out, see over here, all of the wiring out of your stock wheel, we need to remove these pieces here. There's three of them. And what we do is you just unscrew the hex bit there and you can see that they've got the hex, uh, the Torx bit, you know, screw in them, but they're also glued in as well. All right, so they're going to be a bit of a uh, SOB to get out, but once you've got them out, um, you really need, once you, sorry, once you've got the Torx bit out, you just need to apply a bit of pressure on it one way and it'll snap the glue and they'll come out. So everything now is off the stock wheel so we can get rid of that because it's pretty horrible we can invite the new one over Ta -da! and start installing so we're going to install these pieces first we're going to do everything in the exact opposite order of the way we took it apart all right, guys, so now the loom is in, right? Here's the wire that came with the wheel to power the LEDs. All right, now this has an earth on it, okay, which I've put down here, which is the earth point for everything else in the steering wheel, okay? All right, so that's gone down there, it's slotted in underneath, and then what we've got left here is these two that need connecting. Now, I'm gonna show you where they connect. If you buy a wheel like this with the LEDs, you'll know. Um, but everything also comes in an instruction sheet from the manufacturer telling you where to put everything, okay? So once you've laid the loom all the way down in, everything's laid in, all that type of stuff, we can start putting it together and I'm gonna show you where these actually connect, all right? Sorry about the dog going crazy. So like I said, we need to connect the power for the LCD screen up here and the shift lights. 
In order to figure out which of these is the live, you can probably already guess. Um, I've re-plugged the battery back onto the car. I got my multimeter tool and I just went through where this plugs in because this is the electricity for the um, whole steering wheel, all the controls, all that type of stuff. I didn't plug this in. I went and plugged the battery back in the car and I just went along the pins with a multimeter. And it was the second pin in from the right. And this plugs in this way. Second pin in from the right. That is the live. So if we look at this, I'm like, cool, what is the second pin in? And we can see, you'd think it'd be the red but the red actually gave us like nine volts. This black one over here on the end gave us 11, but this green one was giving us 12.3, 12.35 volts. So this is the power cable for the steering wheel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna splice into this and then I'm gonna connect this red cable in there. All right, guys, so if you can hear me okay over this exhaust, <laughs> all I did now is I just test fitted the power cable to make sure that it worked. We actually got power, you can see that. And then down here, we've connected in the wireless reader into the OBD2, but we still get a second piece there so I can still data log and everything when we're at the track. All right. Guys, so look, that's how you install the uh, race steering wheel in the Mark V Supra. All right, remember, don't mess around with airbags, okay? I've still got to put everything back together, but it's the complete opposite um, of when I took it apart. Okay, you guys don't need to see that. Um, but remember, don't mess around with airbags. If you're not confident in what you're doing, once you've test fitted everything, Disconnect the battery again before you reconnect your airbag, okay, because you don't want to set anything off. Guys, I hope you learned something from the video. And again, remember, if you're not confident messing around with an airbag, go see a mechanic.